all fats are no or all lipids are no created equal. When you're working uh, in your feed meals, characterize your lipids, understand especially the peroxidation level of the lipids, and then when protecting these lipid, lipids from oxidation or further peroxidation, um, work with your uh, technical advisor, tailor the antioxidant program to your needs, to your fat sources. That's the best we can do into the field. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. David Rosero, an assistant professor at Iowa State University. So David, before we begin, I know you've been on the show a few times already before, but for those who haven't heard your past episodes, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Sure. Uh, hello, Clayton. Thank you for having me again here in the show. It's a pleasure to join you. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at Iowa State University. Um, I've been here in my position for, for one year plus. Uh, prior to coming to Iowa State, I led the nutrition and technical team at the Hanor uh, company for for nine years. Um, I did my doctorate work at North Carolina State University, focusing on understanding uh, lipids in swine diets, uh, understanding the impact of essential fatty acids in lactating sow diets. Kevin calls all swine experts. You already know the key to a profitable swine operation is healthy, productive pigs. Our team of swine experts are driven by curiosity to create science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash swine. Gotcha. So yeah, that's actually kind of what I wanted to talk talk to you a little bit about today was some of that work that you did at North Carolina State um, as part of your PhD dissertation. Because I see for that for that dissertation, you didn't necessarily just focus on the fat quantity like a lot of studies do, but more particularly on the fat quality and the fat oxidation levels within swine diets and how that affects the pig. So I guess to start, could you give us a brief overview of what all you looked at regarding dietary fats as part of your dissertation? Yeah. Um... We need to understand that not all the fats uh, are created equal, first of all, and we tend to call all the lipids uh, by the same name, right? So I think that's the first thing we realize. We have to characterize each lipid source um, to what it is, a soybean oil or an animal vegetable blend, for instance. Uh, as we start collecting samples from the industry, we realize there's a great variation in not only the quality but the peroxidation status of the fats. And so we went deeper to understand these two aspects of the fats um, because we believe and through uh, literature, we start to understand that that could be impacting performance of uh, especially the nursery pigs that are, will be more susceptible. And, and in the case of my dissertation, lactating sows because of the levels that we were testing. Gotcha. So how would you then define fat quality in swine diets? I will put it as the variation um, that will happen in the physical and chemical properties of lipids uh, per your expectations, right? Because these two will be uh, impacting the digestibility of the lipids and then the susceptibility of the lipid for further peroxidation. Okay, and when looking at the peroxidation status, uh, what metrics would you consider when assessing the quality of the spat? So, um, yeah, maybe maybe the two components would be the quality and, and then the peroxidation. On the quality, I want to make sure that the chemical composition, it is uh, relative... Um, relative to my standard, soybean oil or corn oil or fat uh, or poultry fat or choy white grease, you name it, right? So I want to make sure I have my total fatty acids to that level. I want to have, in the case, if you are interested on the linoleic acid, that is coming up to that level. Uh, you also want to make sure you don't have high level of free fatty acids if that's not the case for that fat source. Um, your moisture in, in, in impurities and saponifiables, your MIUs will be important metric too. Um, that will be part of the quality, I call it. But then in addition to that, I want to make sure the peroxidation status um, 
you don't have a fat that is oxidized already or has begun to be oxidized. And I will put three metrics, key metrics to this. One, you want to understand the peroxidation um, value, your peroxide value. Then you have a, you need to have a quantification of the um, secondary products of oxidation will be your uh, aldehyde. Um, there's different metrics you can use. You can use an anisidine value. You can do markers for those al um, aldehydes like exanol, for instance, or the 2,4-decadinal. Those will be a few of the markers that you can use. And then if you're interested on the farther peroxidation, how much is my, my fat, um, in how much time my fat will be completely oxidized, then you will use an oxidative uh, stability index or OSI. Gotcha. And when looking at the, say, the current status of fat quality and peroxidation levels, use it in the industry today, how would you really assess that within swine diets? There's a very nice report uh, published in October 2020 by the Customer Laboratory Services by Chemin. Uh, this took uh, 392 uh, fat and oil samples that were collected between January 2018 to September 2020. I will characterize that uh, about 40% 40, 40 of those samples didn't show um, uh, signs of oxidation or peroxidation. But the the sixty percent did, and five percent of those were severely oxidized. So that tells you uh, the level of peroxidation into our fats. And then if we want to understand the how much time my samples need to um, will be completely oxidized, fifty percent of those samples had a high risk for future oxidation. Uh, so that is concerning, Clayton. Um, I will say you have to make sure you understand what's the level of peroxidation, especially in nursery diets. If you are forced to use it because of pelleting purposes, for instance, um, you want to make sure you're not compromising the quality of your fats. Gotcha. And then when looking at um, those oxidized fats, so whether it's just mildly oxidized or one of those severely oxidized fats, what are some of the consequences that you may see if using that within your diets? When we realize uh, the variation about quality and peroxidation status of our fats, we were intrigued by the impact on nursery pigs um, in the first place. So what we did at NC State um, with Dr. Eric Van Huden was to oxidize soybean oil at different levels. Uh, so we expose pure and clean soybean oil to heat and oxygen to just expose the, the lipid to oxidation and create different levels in time. And then we fed these lipids to nursery pigs um, to understand intestinal functionality and morphology. And then the function and within the function of the pig, uh, we noticed that digestibility was decreased, that this oxidized soybean oil was uh, modifying the morphology of the intestine. Um, this is work being published in, in the British Journal of uh, Nutrition that then uh, Dr. Petra Chang and Dr. Eric Van Huden took it to the field where we used 2,200 pigs in a commercial facility, um, created a very similar uh, design, oxid uh, oxidating corn oil in this case and feeding this oxidized lipid to pigs at the level of 5%. Uh, what we notice is that increasing levels of oxidation uh, reduce the efficiency of feed utilization, but more importantly, it decreased, more, it increased mortality and increase my number of pigs that I will consider calls, um, so reducing my full value pigs coming into my finisher barns. Awesome. And the last question I have for you is, obviously, it sounds like the best case scenario is just to simply not feed oxidized fats, but that might not work exactly as perfectly as you plan it. So I guess from a, co a commercial standpoint, how can we prevent some of the negative consequences that come with feeding oxidized fats? You, you got a great point and a great question, Clayton, because ultimately I want to see how can I, can I apply my, my nutrition program. 
And and I will say, especially for nursery pigs, um, I will put a lot of attention trying to prevent these oxidized fat, fats coming into my feed mill if I can. So the first thing to me in my quality control program is to characterize the lipid source that I have. And I might not be able to characterize all the samples, all the batches coming uh, onto the feed mill, but at least having an idea on where it's coming from and what, what is coming to my feed mill. And maybe I reiterate that you need to understand chemical composition relative to your expectations. But then going farther, you need to understand the peroxidation status. So focus on those three metrics, your peroxide value, your aldehyde value, and then your OSI value um, will tell you a lot about the current oxidation status of the fat. Now, I, I realize sometimes we don't have that control in the feed mill. Um, we still need to characterize. We have fats or lipids that are fairly in early oxidation. I, wa I want to make sure that lipid doesn't go farther in the oxidation. So um, I think it's a good practice to rely on antioxidants that you might have available. So you work with your, um, and I will refer to chemin as uh, one of the primary um, suppliers of antioxidants. They will have a good program that will guide you into what type of antioxidant can I use uh, relative to my lipid source, and then what level um, can I include that into my fat when it's coming into the feed mill so I can protect from further oxidation. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Dr. Ozero, for coming on the show and sharing all your knowledge on this topic with us. Uh, thank you, Clayton. Thank you for having me. And maybe as a wrap up, I'd like to reiterate that um, all fats are no, or all lipids are no created equal. When you're working uh, in your feed meals, characterize your lipids, understand especially the peroxidation level of the lipids. And then when protecting these lipid, lipids from oxidation or farther peroxidation, um, work with your uh, technical advisor, tailor the antioxidant program to your needs, to your fat sources. Um, that's the best we can do into the field. Thank you, Clayton. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.